Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Tonto Kure by Japan Anime Games. Now, Tonto Kure is actually a winter romance one is what I'm taking a look at here, but there's multiple games in the Tonto Kure line in which you can go ahead and play any of them. They're all standalone and they can all be kind of added together with certain rules. I mean, they all have their own unique aspects to them. The winter romance one has a couple unique little actions that we'll talk about down below. But for the most part, it's a deck builder. You're going to start with seven of one card and three of another, put it into your deck, shuffle it up, draw five, and then play those cards. You're going to have love or your currency in the game. You're going to be able to take one action of a buy and one action of a, uh, a play, but that can change as you maintain your deck and improve its quality, in which you'll be able to play multiple things and buy multiple things, making your characters fall in love, chambering your maids, which are going to be butlers as well in this game, coupling them, putting them into a church, breaking them up, placing blizzards on the church, and so on and so forth. The basic idea of the game is to score victory points, and by the time two of these stacks that you're going to be using in the game run out, the game will end with the final turn, so this ends the game after two of them, and then everybody's going to score their victory victory points, including their deck and any victory points outside in their private chambers or where you're going to be privatizing your maids and whatnot. And then whoever has the most is the winner in the game, Tante Kure Winter Romance, uh, all in this little box here, a little deck builder. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have Tonto Kure Winter Romance and everything included. What's really nice about this game, first off and foremost, is it gives you a full manual of how to play the game. And it's explained pretty well, in my opinion, and including this box here. Now, most deck builders come with a box. But what they don't come with is something very simple, but very, very useful. It's this little piece here that you can add to the box, providing it gives you extra space for additional expansions and whatnot, and keeps everything nice and tight in the box. I really, really appreciated that. So I wanted to go ahead and give it a quick shout out uh, about the box for this game. Uh, as as you can see, there's a bunch of different types of cards here, and um, we're going to go ahead and go through all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and move the rules and the box away, and then I'm going to start talking about the cards. Now, to begin the game, all you got to do is take seven of these One Love cards and three of these Beverly cards here, which are going to be over here. There's a big stack of these guys here, along with Leopold over here as well. Everybody just gets these ten cards, and you're going to go ahead and shuffle them up like any other deck builder. This is going to be your deck of cards to start the game with, which you're going to go ahead and set aside. You're going to also make sure that you're going to include include social bonuses, the two purple cards, Trial and Blizzard, the three love cards, one, two, and three, which are basically values or currency. You could think of these as $1, $2, and $3. The meetup cards, which start off at one, but as you progressively get more and more into them, they'll cost five and then seven, and this is another way the game can end. Over here is a chapel, in which case you're going to be utilizing these in your private quarters to score bonus victory points if you have couples in them. If you don't, they're worth negative. And then there's, of course, these two, which are Beverly. You start the game with a couple of them and Leopold who gets uh, these guys more points than the game along with himself giving you more points but in turn you lose points for having lots of couples so you might want to swing one or the other way providing with couples compared to these chambermaids here. It's also going to give you a ton of these cards here. These are all your maids and or butlers. You can go ahead, they basically are interchangeable, they're just differences male and female. You're going to go ahead and choose 10 of these guys here. The only difference in all of these guys here is as far as what is included, is if you use this guy here, Dermont, you're also going to go ahead and use the Tonto Kure drama cards, which you're going to go ahead and shuffle up. Because whenever you play one of him, you're going to flip one of these cards over, enact the effect, and put the card in your scoring pile, which could give you bonus points, and it can also give you no points or even negative points. And that is basically what you're going to get in the game. Now, like I said, you only need to choose 10 of these, so once you go ahead and pick 10, remove the rest of them from the game, you won't be utilizing them and keep the stacks along with these little uh, these little cardboard cuts uh, so that you'll know what cards go where. They're also nice because they tell you the number of the card, the type it is, and they also fit in the box so you know which cards you can bring out when you want to play the game because you can always change it up. You can also change this game up with any of the other games as far as I'm aware. This is the first game I've played in this series. However, I know that they are at least interchangeable to some extent. Now, I know also that there are different types of cards in the game, so we'll go ahead and talk about the ones that are new, at least as far as I'm aware, such as Build 
Holding cards. These cards, when you play them or buy them, there's a cost up here associated with it. You will take these cards and place them in your private area, which is basically a remove from the game pile specific to each player. And these will give you bonus points or negative points at the end of the game. Meetups are cards that will let you approach another player, playing a card from your hand and choosing a card from their hand of the highest value and trying to couple them as uh, as a par as pairings. And if you can pair them up, you're going to get bonus points because you end up flipping these guys over if you successfully make a couple and you will gain two victory points for each couple. You can gain, of course, multitudes of them as you improve on coupling against other players. This is a very aggressive strategy, but it definitely works. These are your currency in the game, like I said before, and you can use some, you can go ahead and buy these if you want. Then there's a cost associated with them on the top left as well. Uh, blizzards and trials are basically events. Uh, blizzards can be placed on chapels, which makes them useless along with the cards underneath them. And the only way these get removed from the game is if the player who owns the chapel discards four love cards from their hand, thusly putting this back into the town. Trial cards work along with uh, the couple. So if I take a couple by approaching you, utilizing the meetup cards, then somebody else can play a trial on my couple. If I don't reveal a three love card from my hand, that couple is going to then be removed by the player who played the trial, gaining their favorite card of the two, and the other one being gained by the player who lost the couple or pairing, and you can put into the discard pile. Trials will also give you bonus points if you, um, if you succeed. So let's say, for instance, instance, I tried to uh, remove Grant's couple from the game and he ended up revealing a three love card, in which case he's actually going to take this trial card, flip it over in his private quarters, gaining a victory point for succeeding that trial, which is pretty cool, right? If you do a couple somebody, there are these two cards here, social bonuses and friends, in which case the player who fa who lost their, their character due to somebody else coupling with them will receive a social bonus to their hand. And the player who received the couple is going to get this friends card in their discard pile. This will give you a bonus victory points in the game. And this is basically so that you don't miss out on having a card in your hand. This will give you a singular love, which is basically the same as this one here. Now, let's talk about the cards over here if you've never played this game before or any deck builder. In general, you're in this game, you're going to be drawing your hand of five, and then you're going to get to play one buy action. You're going to get to play one play action. And then, of course, you'll have currency and or card draw. So if we're going to take a look at one of these cards here, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, I don't know, how about this one here? This one here has a cost associated with it down on the top left, just like any other card. There is going to cost you three hearts to buy it from here. And also, it's going to give you a singular draw when you play it. So on your turn, if you have this card in your hand, you could play it and it'll let you draw an extra card from your deck. Down here is a little heart, which would symbolize that you're going to be able to use it as currency, but in this case, you're not. Over here on this side, it'll let you play an additional card when you play this. So if you had one order and this said plus two, you could play this card and then you'd end up having two orders because it's going to cost you one to play the card. Over here is going to be buy actions. So if, for instance, you play this card after spending four money, uh, this is going to let you buy two cards from the shop, provided they cost two each or one and three, just depending on the cost of the card. So allowing you to buy additionally cards is good if you have enough extra money. Uh, there's also, of course, special abilities that are all ranging in different values and different things they do. And then, of course, some of the cards have victory points. For instance, there's a question mark on this guy who will score you bonus points for having more of him. And then simply right here, Fidel she's going to give you two victory points if she's in your deck at the end of the game. So that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to draw your five cards. You're then going to go ahead and play a single card and or buy a single card. And then if any of your cards give you any bonus actions, like this guy specifically, he lets you draw an extra card, use this as a currency. He gives you a, a single action for free or, or a play, play action for free. And then also he lets you um, buy an extra thing. So realistically having a bunch of these guys in your hand for your single card placement, you could play this on your turn and then it'll let you play another one and another one and another one, thusly allowing you to draw a bunch of cards and gain a bunch of currency. He's pretty cool, right? And uh, he also is worth victory points the more you have of him. I think up until the point where you have too many of them, worth negative victory points so you got to be careful with that because he's so useful right the game is going to end when when you're playing with 10 of these guys here when the stack runs out for one and then two of them once that happens everyone will take their final turn and then you're going to score victory points in which case you're going to tally up all the victory points in your deck along with any of the couples you have paired in your private quarters along with if you choose to uh 
uh, use these guys here. Now, because you're starting with these guys here, these are basically your your head she uh, your, your your head butler and your head maid. You will, in order to get rid of it, get out of your deck, you're gonna need to actually spend actions. So this one says here, spend two actions. So for instance, if I had my one action and I played this guy here, he gives me two, in which case I would then be able to use those two actions to play her, removing her from my deck and my hand into my private quarters, giving me a victory point. And then this guy, when I buy him, I'm gonna put him in my private quarters. He'll give me six points and a minus one for every couple I have. In addition, whenever I have him on the field, she will give me an additional victory point for each one I have of her. You can mix and match these guys and couples, but remember, you'll lose points for doing both of them. Eh, at least a little bit, right? And that is the basic idea for playing Tonto Core, a pretty simple deck builder with some unique little aspects to it, involving, of course, coupling people together, having your private quarters, getting them married, and if you have them married under this chapel here, it's worth 10 points, which is awesome, avoiding the blizzards from happening on you because they can literally make you end up losing a turn. And then the coolest thing, um, specifically for this one character here, is the drama cards with this character here, drawing them and playing them and seeing what they do, changing the game up, adding a little extra drama to the already dramatic game of Tonto Kure. All right, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, so a little bit more clarity on how couples work because eh, why not, right? It's fun. Uh, when you're playing cards down, you can eventually take these uh, these meetup cards here, right? This is the idea of starting an approach. So for instance, meetup spot one is the forest. It's gonna cost you four hearts. You'll be able to buy this card, which is gonna count as a buy action. And then you're gonna play it. You choose a player or a target to play, targeted player. And then you're going to place one of your cards in your hand face down on the table. This is going to be you approaching uh, the target. The player is going to secretly reveal their hand to you and you're gonna select the highest card uh, of theirs that is a maid or a butler. And in which case you're going to then play. Now, if they don't have one, it instantly fails and you're not gonna be able to do the approach. It just gets discarded. But if they do, they're gonna go ahead and say, okay, these are the two cards you have to choose from. I'll take that one, put it down. You reveal them. And then based on if they are the same value, so if it's a four and a four, you're gonna succeed. And that's gonna create a coupling, which is a pair that will be put into your private quarters, which will give you victory points because you'll flip over this meeting card spot up here. And it says two victory points per couple in your quarters, which is good. Uh, if it is not uh, instantly the same, which is likely, then you're going to have to do something more interesting. Now, if for instance, I had Shirley, which is worth four, and I, and um, and he had Dante, which is worth five, that's not the same. And it's different, the difference is by one. So I'd have to actually discard a love card Card, um, to for the difference. So for instance, if I had a four and a five, this would be what I would need to discard. If it was a four and a seven, I would need to discard three love cards. It doesn't matter what cards. It doesn't matter the value of the cards. It's just how many you, you use. So for instance, I could discard, I'd have to discard three threes if that's all I had in my hand to make the difference from a four and a seven. Then it brings them together, right? Which then will let you put them in their secret quarters. Now, if you still can't do that, it will then fail once again. But that's kind of how coupling works. And then afterwards, Maybe, for instance, I stole a character from you, making a couple for myself. You can, on your turn, spend five for a trial, which is an event, and place it on that couple. And if I don't have the requirements to meet the trial, then you're going to be able to take your character back, or, or mine, and give me the other one. And of course, if I was able to succeed the trial, I'd gain victory points and whatnot. So you're basically gonna be doing this dating kind of sim involved in this winter romance game. The artwork is fantastic. I love the artwork in this game. I love all of the Japan anime games artwork so far. I'm a big fan of anime though, so take that as you will. If you're not a fan of anime, this might not be the artwork for you necessarily, but it just might be the deck builder. This deck builder is a lot of fun and it's actually surprisingly aggressive because you're trying to take people away from other players, coupling them for your own benefit in your private quarters. Now your private quarters is removed from the game, but still going to be activated by certain cards, whether it be a blizzard or a breakup, or of course coupling characters and bringing them back, or when you do your chambering of your maids, which you start with like Beverly here, then they're gonna go together with Leopold scoring points as well in your remove from game area. That's very, very beneficial. It's also a good way to get rid of cards in your deck if you don't want them, you wanna get couples, getting rid of the cards you don't necessarily need for your deck, thusly scoring points for yourself. Not a lot of ways to trash cards like there normally is in deck builders in this one. Instead, you're gonna be using 
different tactics to get what you need to do here. Overall, it's a fun game. It's pretty quick too. And what was interesting as well as I was playing a two player game and my friend joined up and I was just like, oh, join, you know, come on in. I watched a couple rounds as we were playing it and I just gave him the cards and gave him some bonus cards and he just started playing the game and he actually nearly won because there's a lot of strategy in this game and the better strategy you have, the more likely you're gonna win. It's a good way to get your chamber maids and or your couples, maybe you want to mix them, maybe it's not worth it because of the points, maybe you want to be more aggressive towards other players and make them lose points and focus on getting points just in your deck. A lot of different ways to score points as well as mitigating points from your opponents. Another thing is the drama cards, and they're fun. I like the fact that uh, Dermont has some cool abilities. He specifically costs eight, but he's worth a victory point, and it lets you draw a drama card from the town pile, resolve its effect and place in your quarters. So for instance, let's look at one of them. This is called Growing Closer and it gives you three victory points, but all players with at least one couple draw a card. So that might benefit everybody else but yourself, you know, in which case though, you're still gonna get three victory points, which is A-OK -okay in my book. Makes those drama cards really cool, really interesting, really unique. It's a fun game and it's pretty easy to understand. All you need to know really is that you can draw, you, you, you're, you're going to have your hand of five, you're going to be able to play one card from your hand, you're going to be able to buy one card from the town, and then the other things is just currency and drawing cards from the deck but how you make your deck makes all of the difference. If you're a seasoned deck builder and you've played games like Dominion and Ascent or Ascension, you're gonna understand this game pretty much point blank, right out, of, right out of the gate with just a couple of the explanations I mentioned here. Overall, it's a really fun game. I'm gonna be keeping this game to play for quite some time now. I really, really enjoy Tanto Kure. I actually wanna check out the rest of the games now just by playing this one to see how they can be mixed in, uh, and matched as well as the different types of artwork because I'm a huge fan of this style and I really, really enjoy this game. Definitely take a look down below in the description for Tanto Kure if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in taking a look at from Japan Anime Games. All right, that's all I got as always. I'll see you next time.